Hey everybody, welcome to the Gibson Garage and Mark Agnesi from Gibson Guitars. Today, I have with me the man of the hour, Matt Hapey. How's it going, buddy? Very good. Thank you so much. Happy launch day. Happy yeah, you. launch for being insane, man. I'm, I'm very, very happy. It's been an amazing, amazing morning so far. How many is this? This is number three, two, three of models. Of models. Uh, I mean, if you count each string and colors, the original ones we're up were, to 100. And yeah, there was black, white, six, seven. Uh, so it's four, and then now it's eight. Yeah, so, so there are eight. So there are a lot of trust here. There are well, yeah, eight different models yes. launched today. And for all the left-handed people out there who are in the comment section, always complaining yes. that stuff is not available left-handed. Yes. Both colors of both the six and the seven string are available left-handed. Absolutely, yeah, for years I kept hearing from left handed guitar players that we need one of yours, so we heard them loud and clear they will no longer be left out. Oh man, all right, a uh, couple things I wanna talk about. The new guitar, the Les Paul Custom Origin. Um, why come back to kind of that just Les Paul Custom model now? What is it about the customs? that you were drawn to. Definitely. Um, since before having a son, my dad knew he wanted a son that played Les Paul. And so it was like predetermined that I would be into Les Pauls and Les Paul customs. I was very lucky right when I showed an interest in taking music very seriously. Um, when I got into metal, I started woodshedding all day long, playing six to eight hours a day in my bedroom. Um, my dad got me my first Les Paul custom, which again, super lucky that I got that as like a first real guitar around 12 or so years old. And I made sure I wanted to I wanted to do that thing justice. So I tried it for this high school band while I was in eighth grade. It's a band called Trivium. Made it into the band's first band, first job, still the same thing I've been doing for 22 years now. So luckily, luckily that all worked out. And with the origin, I was talking to my good friend Jody, who helped me design these, these guitars this time around. And we were saying the concept, the idea of it was to go back to the first time people ever saw me and saw Trivium. And that was the Pull Harder video where I'm playing a black Les Paul Custom and the Trepidation video where I'm playing a white Les Paul Supreme actually. But I wanted to, for my OCD, make them the same, Les Paul Custom, Les Paul Custom. So I went back to the originals and the very first step home we ever did for everyone's uh, mental notes, what we did was send that first Les Paul custom my dad got me, my favorite guitar of all time. Sent that to Epiphone where we perfectly modeled it for the weight, the feel, the look, everything. I said, I know it's custom shop versus Epiphone. I was like, let's make this Epiphone as close as humanly possible as custom shop guitar. And after about six to nine months of tooling it on the road in the studio, we finally nailed it. Um, that guitar did incredibly well. And we said, what changes can we do? So the changes were, I wanted to finally go lighter. It's not because everyone was telling me my old guitar was too heavy, but I finally decided I want to go a bit lighter on Les Paul Custom. So we went a little bit lighter, went the thinnest neck possible, the new modern heel, which I actually prefer. For this one, it's what I prefer about it is a mixture of the last neck heel, but also going back to the traditional Gibson heel, but just a lot more playable. And I feel like for what I do, for the dad style solos that I play that I was talking about with the pentatonic stuff, that it fits much better. Yeah. I'm going with locking tuners. Not locking in the sense that it's the same note, uh, but what it locks is the string, so you don't have to have endless amounts of string just stuck here as all of us guitar players typically do. I wanted to go with the knurled knobs, because the classic knobs are great, but I feel like with how aggressive we play, sometimes my hand knocks them off. Yeah. So this time, we've got these knurls that do not come out at all. And the reason why they have all the different pickup positionings is with these Fishman and Cage Customs, the way I had Fishman described to me in the Fluence Moderns is that they are passive pickups with active technology. But the two voices are called active or passive. So there's this very aggressive modern metal tone when it's down, and it's a sort of passive rock heavy metal tone when it's up. Now there's a single coil as well. So what's pretty nuts is you can make a Les Paul sound like a twangy country guitar. And I've never really felt that before till this guitar. So I think that's a really amazing thing. And all the different combinations between bridge, middle, neck, and all the push pulls that you do. There's, there's a lot of combinations. I'm terrible at math, so I won't tell you how many there are. Um, we also went with these strap locks, these diamond strap locks. I think they're pretty awesome. So that way you can actually put a strap directly on the guitar right when you first get it. And you can jam and stand and not worry about jumping around the guitar, falling and breaking. So yeah, it's it's a guitar. I'm incredibly proud that we were able to bring this in the last tour we just did with Megadeth and Lamb of God, Trivium and Flames. We crushed every single day. Um, the last five Trivium records were all recorded on my Epiphones, and the Ibaraki record that just came out, my solo project, 
That was actually recorded on the original prototype guitars that Epiphone first ever made for me ever. Very cool, Miles. A seven string is available in this. Talk to me about that process of, of when did seven strings become a thing in your arsenal that you went to? I started using seven string for two with two different bands at the same time. It was Korn's Simplicity and Heaviness, but it was also Dream Theater's Super Technicality. Both were using seven string, and, and I was obsessed with being able to try that. So our third record, The Crusade, we actually jumped into some seven string territory, and I really liked the sonic range of being able to go multiple places. So with Trivium, we use E flat standard, drop D flat, and the seven string, we use standard B flat, and then we can drop this as well for the drop tuning for a couple songs that we have. I find that with all guitar players, if you're a guitar player already, that anytime you can explore some different sounds, it might open up some new creativity. Whether that's a tuning, whether that's a sound, whether that's a pedal, whether that's an amp, um, it's it just opens up new interesting things. And actually, just to speak of that, to speak of the fun of playing, and speak of the the creativity and the allowing things to happen. Just yesterday, I was able to go down to Cesar's place and we were able to jam all his guitars. And I've had, I have not had the, that feeling of just jamming and playing different guitars and feeling inspired and writing riffs since I was like 16, going to a music store and just trying guitars off the wall. And I actually wrote a riff in a moment. I'm going to make sure I record that riff. I've got it in my head. It's, it's that. And I, and I know that these guitars will inspire that because I know that the people that support Trivium will look at my guitar and know that the same guitar that I play on stage, the same one that they're going to get from the yeah, store. Yeah, you're not playing a souped up something different than what is for sale today yep. here in the show. Yep. That is the guitar that is on stage with you. Yes, ever. and the only mod that I do is the Everton mod, but that, for people's knowledge, that locks you into that tuning basically forever. So that's like a very specific thing, and we're like, you know what, that is such a, I want my guitar to be for a beginner, intermediate, professional. And so if, they're pro level and they decide they want to lock themselves in the tuning forever, they should go for that. But my studio guitars, I leave them like this so I can go in and out of different tunings and try and play different things. So it's it's the exact same one. It's the same one from the same factory that I'm using that they're going to use as well. Very cool. We got people in here. I'm sure some of these people would like to hear you play something. Are you okay with that? Of course, yeah. yeah we those do. pickups are very cool and they do a lot of stuff. Maybe you can run yes. us through some of what those Fluence pickups are doing in your model. Sounds good. And if there's any questions on riffs or like how you play this or how you play that, just let me know.
textures will inspire different methods of playing up to it. Very, very cool. I want to make sure everyone has a chance to ask some questions. We also have some questions coming in uh, from online. Does anybody have any questions for Matt, who's in the building here while I wait to get some online questions? Just shout them out. Seven string, we do B flat standards. So on our first record that we did seven strings, we're in B, B flat standards, excuse me. So that'd be B E A G G B E. It's a lower octave of the high B. Um, nowadays, we tune everything half step flat. We did that because at first I thought my voice range kept getting lower, so I was like, let's tune this a bit lower. But with more and more training, it became easier. So we just stuck in that lower tuning. So seven strings, B flat standard. I'll show you there in a second, and then drop A flat. Some other fun project down the line too of in the Gibson family. So 
I'm up for it, but I don't know if we can talk about another eight on top of this. <laughs> but you really do feel at home on the Les Paul. I, I see you your, your home spot, right? I do. And anytime someone's seen me with a different body shape, I've even had other bands tell me the Les Paul is your body. Like, which, well, that's kind of sounded strange, didn't it? <laughs> um, the Les Paul is your guitar body that makes sense on you. Yeah, got it. Okay. Ethan Addis on Instagram said, um, what was the first riff you wrote using the new signature guitar? Can you remember? Did you have any inspired moments when you took out those prototypes and write anything? This this new guitar right now? Yeah. It would be the song that you heard in the background of the launch video, which is actually, once I got the prototypes, I said, I want to make something that is completely done with these exact prototypes for this prototype for the launch of the guitar. It would be the... I think we right. stand by these for many. Right. My brain hard drive is full from all the 10 That's his, his name on Instagram. Both are asking about how uh, do you develop speed and precision on down kicks or what exercises uh, can they work on to really increase precision and speed while down kicking? Okay, so for metal, there's like a couple of aspects of getting good at things. It's the technical aspect, but it's also the stamina base. So I feel like getting the stamina for down picking, for down up picking, for the fusion down down, down 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 I've talked about is sitting over the metronome. Metronome is something I've always pushed, I've always pushed it since I first ever read John Patricia talking about the importance of using a metronome. And reading about Kirk Hanna talking about the importance of using a pinky. So all these guitar players, I grew up reading their columns in guitar magazines or watching their instructionals. Um, but the big thing with the down picking, um, Grace asked me the same question yesterday. Sit there at a tempo you're comfortable with for a while. You sit there with the metronome, build it up. It's going to be like running, it's going to be like weightlifting. If any of you have ever done anything like a sport where you have to work or your stamina for swimming, your stamina for rounds you can do in jiu-jitsu, for rounds you can do in kickboxing. Uh, nice, slow tempo. So let's say this is your max. Sit there for a while with the metronome, not watching TV, not being distracted. Riffs in the top end. What those riffs do, those little down hip notes, I mean, the quarter notes do, is it allows a little bit of a rest for the hand. It also sounds good for the ear. If everything is just. It sounds cool, but I feel like having that breather is good for the exercise. Get the tempo mastered, bump it up 3 to 5 BPM. Gradually working up the speed, and this isn't going to be like you do it a couple times. You're like, I'm doing this for five minutes a couple times a week, or multiple times a week, and then getting into the tempo. There's a tempo with down picking where it goes away, where you can't really do it anymore unless you're picking super light. And I don't like to pick super light. <laughs> And then same thing with the gallop picking the down 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 downs that I showed yesterday. Yesterday, the mechanical 
right side of your brain of the techniques you need to know how to play, and the left hand side of just playing and having fun and improvising. Uh, Jax Guitars on IG asks, what is the wackiest technique you know to make weird and cool sounds? You were telling me about some, you can do like a Kodo, or like, a, oh, yeah. you, can, you can make a guitar sound like traditional yeah. Japanese instruments. That is, like with a, a, that is with a piece of technology, that's with the Fishman, Fishman Triple Play. So it turns your guitar into basically a keyboard, so anything you run off MIDI, under PW, you can run with that. Um, I've done stuff like, I'm down from the sky before the hatch part. That kind of thing. Um, what is that? Gojira, fit for an autopsy, more range. But that's sort of their thing. So I have been looking for what my thing is. I think it's the down, 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 down that's really become my signature. That's the signature. Yeah. But there's no right or wrong. You can do anything, but there's no right or wrong. That sounds awful. Maybe don't do that. But. Uh, Ninja Mushroom on Instagram said, How do you stay relaxed while playing and singing on stage? That's what your rhythm parts are complex enough. And singing on top of that, how do you do? How does the brain keep it all separated? I wish there was a shortcut I could say for all that stuff, but the best analogy that I can tie into it is one I learned in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. It said the only way to get good is mat time. But spending time on the mat, spending time with the guitar, spending time singing, it's not going to be a tip, or it's, gonna, it's not going to be a quick thing. It's going to be, first of all, finding a song that realistically you can play and sing at the same time. There's some things that don't make sense to play the song. There's three records we did but I love these records, but the Crusade, Sounds of Stone, and Vengeance Falls, that we wrote parts that I've never tested, can I play this and sing this with the band? Wrote the music, recorded the vocals, didn't actually try it. Every single record ever, we made sure that we could play the stuff perfectly in the room together as a band, and I could play and sing it. There's actually some riffs, like Brave the Storm, that is not that hard of a riff, or even Pantera's Walk, not that hard of a riff, but playing and singing is almost impossible because the two rhythms don't collide together at any point. But that's why when people look at Metallica or Megadeth songs, like, how do they play that? How the heck can they play the same that? If they're doing it, you can do it as well. You just have to learn the two parts separately, slowly, combine them separately, slowly. The idea of striking and grappling, striking and grappling together slowly. Um, uh, some random questions here. Vespa Nina on IG said, is there a tattoo you have that you regret? Thankfully not. All of these are good tattoos. Yeah, I made sure uh, everything, so there's this Japanese term that used to be kind of offensive, but it's not anymore. It's otaku, which means nerd, super fan. Um, my mom has always said I've been an otaku of everything I get into. Everything I get into that I like, I go to the absolute maximum and full. So when I knew I wanted to get tattooed, I was like, I don't just want a singular tattoo, I want to cover my entire body, but I want to do it to something. So I found Japanese traditions of it. Where do they stick to? Uh, what can I get? So everything has been traditional pieces. This is a 1700s piece, this is the first thing I got. Um, and back to the Otaku thing, I knew the tattoo artist was elusive. I knew I wouldn't see him again. So the outlines took about three hours, but the coloring took nine hours straight. And getting tattoos is terrible. It's, it sucks. Anyone that tells you they don't mind it probably doesn't have very many. It sucks. It's terrible. So make sure you do research before you get something. Yeah. Um, one more question for me. Uh, just from getting to know you, you're probably the busiest guy that I know. You're always doing stuff. Is there anything that fans can look forward to coming from you here later this year, this summer? What else you got going on outside of music right now? Um, first of all, I'm so honored that the Gibson family has taken me in here to show me this incredible time, this incredible launch, and trusted me with eight guitars for one person, which is amazing. And I know that the tribute supporters will, will eat it up and have a great time with the guitars. My 12-year project with Ibaraki, my Japanese, Black Metal Side Project just came out after 12 years. That's finally out. My kids' book comes out in August. It's fully illustrated by my good friends Half Sumo that have been doing all the amazing art of my jackets, the Tribune stuff that we do in our backdrops. Um, hopefully some guitar paint jobs one of these days. So it's it's a matter of constantly doing things that are fun. Um, I'm really excited about the kids' books. It's all the Japanese stories that are from Ibaraki. And I'm just, I was sitting there at home and 
realizing how much we see Viking culture in things. Well, why don't we see more Japanese culture? And I figure I may as well tap into that 51% of my DNA and go into that. There we go, nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's a little bit of that uh, constantly working. I finally scored my first entire video game, which is really great. I can't disclose too much on the game, but all the style of music is all Brazilian style music. So it's bossa nova, uh, pagoji, samba, lo-fi stuff. That was great to finally do that. I hope I can continue on with that. And I've always been very vocal about dreaming of scoring the game Doom. So I hope I can do that someday. Um, all sorts of stuff, constantly going. Then I've got the Matthew K. Hickey stuff where I'm doing songs like Herman Richard, doing the Magic the Gathering music. Just never stopping. I don't like to stop. I like to do a lot of things. We're a busy man. Well, the guitars are finally out today. The Matt Heavey, uh, Les Paul Custom Origin Models, six string, seven string. Go to Epiphone.com while they're still available. They're like for the next three or four hours that they're still available. Still awake. Before they're gone, Matt, thank you so much for coming to hang. Everybody, Matt Avey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.